Are you trying to cut and install crown molding for the first time, but not really sure where to begin? Well today I'll show you exactly how to stain, cut, and install crown molding, plus a few tips at the end. So let me show you. Alright, and right here I see a couple scratches here, so I'm just going to take some 220 grit sandpaper and just try to uh, sand those out a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And for the stain, I'm just using a custom mix from Sherwin-Williams and a foam brush. I'm gonna brush it on there, let it soak in for about, you know, three or four minutes. And then I'm gonna take a rag and wipe off any excess. I know typically you apply stain with a rag. You just wipe it on with a rag and then wipe it off. Um, but I found that this method, you know, this is how I did the base cabinets. So I'm gonna do it the same way for this crown molding and they should match really well then. All right, and it's been a few minutes, so I'm just gonna come back here and wipe off any excess. You can see it gets a little bit more, uh, I guess transparent, you can start to see the wood grain through it again. So, just like that. All right, and you can see the difference here. This one I wiped off the excess stain, this one I did not yet. So you can kind of see the wood grain come back through there. And for a finish, I'm going to use a satin clear poly acrylic. It's a water base, so it dries really quickly. And again, I'm just going to apply it with a foam brush. All right, and once that first coat dries, then just take some 220 grit sandpaper and lightly sand this down. That first coat's gonna kind of raise the grain and make it a little bit rough. So we're gonna sand that down and then apply a second coat. But just lightly sand it. Just take a rag or whatever and just wipe that dust off. All right, so we'll let this dry, then we'll cut it to size and install it. All right, so we're just about ready to make some cuts, but let's just take a look at these cabinets and see like the pieces that we're gonna need and kind of the orientation, which side the angle's gonna have to be on on each piece and so forth. So if you look up here, uh, the crown molding is gonna go across here. So on this one, we're gonna need three pieces. And then on this one, we're only gonna need the two pieces and both of them are gonna run into the wall. So let's just take these one at a time. So I'm gonna start with this piece right here. Uh, we noticed that this side's gonna butt into the wall. So that's just gonna be a straight cut right there. And then this side is where we're gonna want the angle in. So the left side is gonna be the side that the angle's on. And if we put a tape on there, we can see that we need a piece that is 12 and 1 16th of an inch long. So let's go make that cut. All right, just a few things to kind of keep in mind before we make that first cut. Um, and one is the orientation of crown molding. So this is kind of a typical profile for crown molding. And these two ridges right there, that's the bottom. And then this other side is the top. So if we pretend that like this fence is the upper cabinet, uh, it's going to be installed like that along, you know, this side. So this is the top, this is the bottom. However, when we make the cuts, we flip that. So we're going to go like this and we're actually, we're not going to, we're not going to lay the piece flat like that. And we're not going to stand it up like that. We're actually going to 40, I guess 45 it so that this edge on the bottom or rather the top of the piece, this edge on the top of the piece is sitting flat on the base of the saw. And then this edge on the bottom of the piece is sitting uh, flat on this back fence. So it's gonna sit there at about a 45 degree angle like that. Now this is one method, one way of cutting crown molding. And the other way 
would be, you would lay it flat like this, and then you could rotate the saw like that, and you would also have to tilt the saw uh, with this dial back here. And actually, I started filming that way and trying to explain it on camera, and I was confused myself, so I'm like, Man, if I'm confused and I'm trying to explain this to somebody else, that's just not gonna be a good video. So, let's keep it simple. We're gonna kinda tilt that piece up like that when we make the cut. And now the only angle that you gotta change is either a 45 this way or a 45 that way. Just to keep it really simple like that. So our first piece, we're gonna have the wall on the right side. And we're gonna have the angle cut on the left side. Now, keeping that in mind, we have this piece on the saw and it's upside down. So actually, we're gonna be cutting that angle that we want on the left side, we're gonna cut it on this right side of the piece. That way, when we flip it over, it's gonna be on the left side. So let me show you that. So we're gonna take our saw and we're gonna turn it to the right 45 degrees. Lock that in place and we're gonna make that cut on the right side of this piece. We have it flat along the base of the saw, we have it flat along this fence of the saw, and let's make that cut. All right, here's our off cut, and now if we flip this over, you can see that we have our angle on the left-hand side here, it's gonna be installed like that because these two ridges signify the bottom of the crown molding and now all we got to do is turn our saw back to 90 degrees just a simple straight cut we can measure this distance from the bottom of the piece here over that 12 and 1 16th of an inch and just make a straight cut like that so we'll pull the tape out like that and we'll mark 12 and 1 16th of an inch now I have it marked there. I'm actually gonna cut it a little bit long because I can always come back and trim off a little bit more just so I get that perfect uh, size piece. So I got our saw at, at 90 degrees, it's locked in place. Now, just make that cut. All right, like I said, you can kind of see that mark there. I just left it a little bit long. We can always come back and trim that off if we need to. Let's go see if this fits in place. All right, here we are, let's put it in place and see. Got it tied along the wall right there. And we can come over here and see that. Yeah, it's a little bit long yet. So let's just trim that back and test it again. All right, so tight along the wall and our corner is looking pretty perfect. So I'm good with that one. All right, so we've got that piece cut to size. Now let's just make the opposite one over on this side. Should be the same length, um, but just an opposite cut. So let me show you. So this piece is gonna be the opposite of the last one. So at the end, when we got the piece all cut out and we're gonna install it, the wall is gonna be on the left-hand side and the angle is gonna be cut on the right-hand side. But again, this piece is upside down, so we're actually gonna be cutting that angle on this left-hand side, and on this right-hand side is gonna be a straight 90-degree cut. So if we're cutting the angle on the left side, then we're gonna turn the saw to the left, that 45 degrees. And for the piece on this side, when I'm cutting the angle in uh, over here, since I'm gonna be kind of using my left hand, which isn't my dominant hand on the saw, and I'm holding the piece with my right hand, I like to cut that angle in first and leave myself plenty of extra crown molding on this side so that once I have this angle cut in over here, I can just lay this piece down flat, turn my saw back to 90, and really dial in that overall length. I just find that this is a much simpler cut to make and you can really sneak up on that overall dimension. With that being said, let's make these cuts. Now we got that angle cut. I can turn my saw back to 90 degrees. Lock that in place. Now I can lay this board down flat measure out my distance and make that cut. All right, I've got that one in place and it looks like it fits pretty nicely. 
All right, so I've got both sides cut to length. Now all I gotta do is take the measurement for this front piece and get that cut to length. And that piece is gonna be 18 inches long. All right, so for this piece, we're gonna have an angle cut on both ends of this. And personally, uh, the first cut I like to make is with the saw turned to the left side at that 45 degree mark. And again, that's just personal preference because I'm right hand dominant. So in this cut, I'll be holding the, the work piece with my right hand and cutting with my left hand. Um, that way, the next cut and the cut that's gonna have to land on that 18 inch mark, I can turn the saw the other way and uh, be a little bit more confident with my cut just because I'm just used to cutting with my right hand, holding with my left hand. So that's just my personal preference. If you guys are opposite handed or whatever, uh, you might like to do that in the reverse order, but that's just the way that I'm gonna do this cut. So like I measured downstairs, the short end needs to be 18 inches and the short end uh, for this is gonna be the bottom of the piece. So remember we have it oriented where the bottom is on top and the top is on bottom. So I know that for this first cut, since I'm not cutting on this side first, I'm making this cut first, I'm gonna want at least 18 inches of room to work with over on this side. So let's just give myself a good 20 inches. And now I can just kind of line up the saw with that 20 inch mark. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect or right on that mark. This is just gonna be our first cut. All right, we can take the piece, lay it flat, and then we'll pull 18 inches this way. And we're gonna pull that right from that cut edge right there. So that's gonna be the inside corner when the two pieces come together. So I've just got my tape pulled out like that. I'm gonna put the 18 inch mark right on that edge and right there. Look at that, right on 18. Tape is right on that edge. I've got the piece up in place. It's in contact with the bed and the back fence. Now I'm just lining up my blade. So that's right on that mark. And actually I'll probably give myself a little bit of extra room. Again, I can always sneak up on the cut. That's looking pretty good, so let's give that a shot. All right, so here's a lesson learned. Uh, if you think you've given yourself an extra couple of inches and that's gonna be good, uh, you know, double that and give yourself another couple inches. I was that close to having a good cut there, but I'll have to remake this piece and yeah, just a lesson learned. We've got the last bit of crown molding that I have. <laughs> so we gotta make this work. All right, we got this. Turn the saw to the right again. All right, come on, please be long enough. Looks like we're good to go. All right, so I've got the three pieces cut out for this cabinet, and I've got the two pieces cut for this cabinet. Now it's time to put them together and install them up there. So I'm just about to glue and brand new these two pieces together, but before I do that, I'm going to take a, in my case, brown marker and just color these edges. Of course you could take the same stain color that you used, but I just find that, you know, I got these markers on hand and they're quick and easy and less messy than breaking out the stain again. So what that's gonna do is just kinda cover up any little imperfections in those cuts that you might have. Um, so if you didn't nail down those cuts just perfectly, I know mine aren't perfect, um, but you can kinda see like that already starts to make the cut look pretty darn good. Um, and there's one other trick I'll show you once we get these uh, glued and nailed together that will help even a little bit more. So yeah, take a marker to your edges. Now I've just grabbed a piece of plywood and it's got a square corner on it here. I double checked it with a square. And the reason you want to use something with a little bit of thickness to it is because you're going to use that as kind of like a little backstop for when you go to glue these two pieces together. Speaking of gluing the pieces together, I'm going to use a combination 
of CA glue, which is just super glue, and then an activator. This makes it just set up really, really quickly, along with some wood glue. So the CA glue is gonna bond the two pieces together quickly, and then the wood glue, once that dries, is going to be the strength of that connection. And then also we'll follow up with a couple brad nails. So again, remember that these two ridges are the bottom of the piece. So those are gonna bump up against that piece of plywood. And you're just taking those two pieces and you're just kind of sliding them together at the corner. And you're gonna use that again as kind of like a backstop. I'm gonna use some wood glue. This is gonna give it the overall strength. And then for the immediate bonding, I'm gonna use some CA glue and that's gonna set up with some of this activator. Now I only got a few seconds to work with this, so it's a blessing and a curse. And I really appreciate the motorcycle in the background. That was, that was great. Sometimes I just like to hit it with a dab of CA glue on the top there, just kinda welding those two pieces together. There we go, set up. Now the strength again will come when the wood glue dries. Let's wipe that a little bit off. Just to be safe, let's throw a couple brad nails in there. For brad nails, I'm using 18 gauge and they're one inch long. I usually just put three in each corner. All right, so we got this corner done. I think it looks pretty nice actually. Um, I'll get some putty and fill in those nail holes, but otherwise, let's just get this other other piece attached to it. All right, a little bit of glue, a little bit of super glue. Activator. Throw a few nails in there. All right, so I showed you the marker trick to help hide this scene, and I think that does a pretty good job on its own. I could probably leave this just how it is, and it would be just fine. However, uh, if you wanna make it just a little bit better, you can see up here, uh, they don't quite match up perfectly, and then actually right along in here, they don't either. So, the way you get those to kind of match up as best as possible is take like a round, um, metal object kind of like this or like a screwdriver and you're simply just going to run that along that edge and kind of press it down. So what that's doing is it's kind of bending over the wood fibers of the piece that's sticking out further than the other piece. In my case this piece is sticking beyond this piece just by a little bit. So you're just going to rub that on there and it's bending over those uh, wood fibers and then those two corners are gonna be about as good as they can get Now obviously this has some limitations uh, If you're way off, it's really not gonna fix that, but you can run over it like that And if you need to I don't think I do in this case, but if you need to um, If you expose some raw wood again, you can just hit it with that marker again key with the marker is hit it and then wipe off the excess. Now you would never know that that wasn't, you know, almost perfect from the start. So yeah, just another trick to kind of hide some of those imperfections. All right, and now for the final step, just installing these pieces. So you can see here, fits actually really nice and snug kind of like that fit and then as far as you know if this back part needs to go down or up a little bit i actually installed these little strips right here to bring that out flush with this face frame right here so i'm just going to line my crown molding up with those strips and then that should level out this front face just fine and then to install it i'm just going to use the one inch brad nails so I'm going to work from this back corner here and just put in a couple brad nails. Bump that up just a little bit. Put three in for good measure and you should be good. And honestly this front piece probably doesn't even need one but I'm just going to add one right in the middle. And there we go. We've got some crown molding installed. 
Now, let me show you this other cabinet right here. I'm just gonna take my crown molding and kind of line it up with that strip because I know that strip is nice and level and straight. So we've got this back edge lined up like that. Throw in a brad nail, pick up this front edge just a little bit, right about there. And the third one for good keeping. Now I'll move to this front edge and honestly you could throw a level up on here but I think I got a pretty decent eye for seeing level and you can also kind of compare it to the top edge of this door right here so if that gap looks pretty good then uh, I say just nail it in place. Hopefully none of your relatives come over with a tape measure and kind of measure that gap on this side and this side. If they do, then, uh, <laughs> man, I feel for you. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to cutting and installing crown molding. Now, if you guys like this video or maybe you learned something, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button down below. That just lets YouTube know that this was a decent video and maybe it should pass it on to some other people to watch. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. That way you're notified every time I release a new video. And until next time, thanks for watching.